When you conjure the idea of rolling rights and dungeon crawlers, you're thinking polar opposites of each other. But why couldn't they meet over a few drinks and make sweet gaming babies? Welcome to Paper Dungeons in 5 minutes or less. Controlling the classic archetypes of warrior, wizard, cleric and rogue, your job is to abstractly explore the dungeon, advance in your chosen profession, chew up some little minions, step on some traps and slay the three big bosses that have conveniently made this their dingy home. Throughout all nine rounds of a game, you'll be rolling six black and white dice and writing on a randomly selected dungeon with its own backstory. And then selecting three of said dice each round to either level up one of the preset heroes, craft artifacts for passive and one-time effects, brew potions to keep you from death's door, and exploring the dungeon to, well, you know, progress. To do that, you'll be getting your line drawing on with the non-reusable pads that will pit you against obstacles, some of the spiky damage dealing variety and some of the wall variety. Face minions that require one of your party to be a certain level, else you'll take damage, and collect treasure that basically just replicates the above mentioned non-exploration actions. But it's also a race against time as the denizens monsters will attack at the end of rounds 3, 6 and 8. And if you haven't explored their lair or leveled up enough, you'll end up running away and losing glory points. But to help you in your quest you'll have special power cards and objectives that will aid you in your endeavours. Navigate all this most efficiently and you'll be crowned the winner. So why might you like it? Well it's distillation of fantasy and dungeoneering displays its retro vibe front and centre. This feels very much like old school swords and sorcery, which is portrayed excellently on all of the components and its accompanying artwork, and to tie a bow in it the production quality is top notch. Also, it gives you more choices on your turn than similar games of this complexity. It's not necessarily apparent at first, but there are lots and lots of ways you can approach a game of paper dungeons. Go full character level up, be greedy with the artifacts, prioritise your exploring, or treat yourself to a bit of each. They all bring a sense of satisfaction. Credit as well to the amount of content for a small box game, the number of maps you can explore, monsters you can face and the power and objective cards are all welcome and not necessarily expected additions that add to the amount of variety on offer. But why might you not like it? Well, despite its best intentions, the feel of a dungeon crawler, even in a rudimentary fashion, is an ambition too far. This looks like grid movement with pencil and paper, and feels like grid movement with pencil and paper. So chalk this down as failing to meet expectations more than failure. The race to a binary target for every conflict also feels like an opportunity missed. Interacting further with the dice in the fairly limited encounters you have with minions and monsters would have gone some way to increasing immersion and interaction without overburdening its complexity. If you're looking for similar games then both Cartographers and Trolls of Tukana fill a similar niche. With Paper Dungeons though, we have a very tidy abstraction of dungeon diving with familiar lead drawing sticks and pulp canvases. Alas, I've been the voice of Benji, and this video has ended. Serious question, could a paper dungeon work in real life? Would more supporting walls do the trick, or is it a straight no-no?